they told me that, okay, and then told me that I said last week that I was going to, when I said um, New Revelation, that I was going to say something similar. So that's kind of funny. I said it must be God, because I the scripture I have today actually does start off kind of similar. So if you'll turn to Galatians um, chapter 1, beginning at verse 11. It's Galatians chapter 1, beginning at verse 11. Uh -huh, Galatians chapter 1, beginning at verse 11. I'll probably go through 24. And if there's a name for this sermon, it's called, Who Stole the Cookie from the Cookie Jar? <laughs> and then we're going to talk a little bit about deflection today, something called a deflection. And I think once we start talking about it, you'll go like, wow, you know, this is really common right now in the land. But um, while you all are turning to Galatians 1, uh, how many people have heard that little rhyme that kids say, like, who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? Yeah. And then you go like, not, yeah. <laughs> then you go like, not me, who me couldn't be, yeah. right? Yeah. Then you say someone else's name, so like you say, who stole the cookie from the cookie yeah. jar? You say, not, I mean, who me yeah. couldn't be. Then you yeah. say, who, then, that's, 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 who stole the cookie from the cookie jar, not me? Uh, couldn't be the, the who who stole the cookie from the cookie jar then you say somebody else's name right you play the blame game so I say Bobby stole the cookie from the cookie <laughs> jar like that little Bobby laughing he said I ain't taking no cookies but it's like, it probably was him when he was little did, 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 did. <laughs> so that's the way you do it you, you deflect you put it on somebody else like then who couldn't be then everybody goes then who right. and then you say like you know Miss Lily stole the cookie and he goes yeah. well that's the way it goes <laughs> You know, going around this whole room, you know, yeah. even if you got the cookie in your mouth, baby, yeah. even if you got the cookie in your yeah. pocket, yeah. the way the game is played is you say somebody else did it. That's yeah. what this sermon's about, amen. Right. 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 It's blaming somebody else for what you did right. or deflecting and putting it on somebody. Mm -hmm. Hey, you talking about me? What about what you did? Right, right. I mean, that's what we're going to talk about today, amen. It's called deflection. So Galatians chapter 1, verse, starting at verse 11, New Living Translation says, Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on mere human reasoning. I received my message from no human source, and no one taught me. Instead, I received it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. So you all who did listen to the sermon I preached at New Revelation, it did start off that same way with Paul uh, talking about himself, uh, not receiving the message that he was delivering in and of himself. He, was, he got it from Christ. It goes on to say, you know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion, how I violently persecuted God's church. I did my best to destroy it. I was far ahead of my fellow Jews in my zeal for the traditions of my ancestors. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his son to me so that I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. When this happened, I did not rush out to consult with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were apostles before I was. Instead, I went away into Arabia, and later I returned to the city of Damascus. Then three years later, I went to Jerusalem to get to know Peter, and I stayed with him, Cephas, for 15 days. The only other apostle I met at that time was James, the Lord's brother. I declare before God that what I am writing to you is not a lie. After that visit, I went north into the provinces of Syria and Cilicia, and I still, and still the Christians in the churches in Judea didn't even know me personally. All they knew was that people were saying the one who used to persecute us is now preaching the very faith he tried to destroy, and they praised God because of me. Amen. So I'm going to move over to, I got it printed out too, so I can see it larger. Amen. But I always want to use the Bibles because, you know, people go like, where'd you get that from? Amen. Right. Some people need to see that Bible. So I read that there, but how many people know it's not the printed word, it's the word in your heart. Amen. Amen. And so we look at that when Paul, what I liked about that was because Paul, he didn't try to cover up who he was. He didn't try to cover up where he came from or what he used to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's why God led me to that. He said, I want you to understand because we have to be authentic. Amen. We were talking about that before, I think the last time I preached. Amen. I can't wait to hear Peggy's sermon again next week. I wish I, wish I would have heard it. Um, but we have to be authentic. 
we're t we've been talking about all over the land, people are talking about, people are hungry and thirsty for a word from the Lord, but you have to be authentic. Yes. I mean, you have to be honest about who we are. Exactly. We can't come in, you know, we used to be this bad guy, we come in trying to perpetrate, like all of a sudden none of that was true. And so Paul comes in and he says, hey, I want you all to know that and receive this message is from God, it's not from me. Right. So when the person is saying, every Christian is saying that we're speaking on behalf of God, then we need to be able to give our witness, don't we? Yes. How yes. we arrived at that conclusion, don't we? Amen. We have to defend our faith and give a reason for why we believe what we believe. And he said, hey, y'all know what I was like. I mean, some people try to pretend they weren't like right. that. Amen. I mean, some people have, act like they never did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Some people want you just to forget it. Why are you always bringing up my past? Amen. But he owns it. And don't you know there's power in owning your past? Amen. We don't want to stay in our past. We don't want to stay under accusations. We don't want to stay in our old reputation. But if you own it, what else is there for somebody to say? Yeah, I used to do that in once. Yeah. And so that's the end of that. He says, so you know what I used to be like? I was a Jew. I followed every tradition. I followed every rule. He says, I did my best to destroy anybody who was followers of the way. I tried to kill those people. He said, I was I had zeal to kill them. I'm in mean, verse 15. He said, but even before I was born, see, he's got a sense of calling and purpose that we all need to have, especially at a time like this when we have so many people trying to tell us what to do. I mean, when to go out, when to stay in, what to think and how to feel. Christians need to stay attached to the vine so you can remember that you still have a calling and, pur and purpose that may go, oh, 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 what's the word, a ride? Right. Of what somebody else is telling you that you're right. supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why you got people on the streets. That's why you got people coming into town. That's why you got people staying in. That's why you got people that go out to eat. You got people cooking because they're using their own minds. They're deciding for them, for themselves, what's right. right for them and what's not right for them. All we say is use wisdom. Amen. I mean, use godly wisdom. And so he says, hey, I went out and I did this, but what I discovered was before time even started, God had a plan for my life. Amen. And he revealed that plan to me, and he'll reveal it to us, what his plan is for us. Okay. And he said, I didn't have to go ask anybody else about it. I didn't have to ask anybody else what I was supposed to be doing. Amen. How people always want other people's approval. Yeah. Amen. You know, I've been thinking, I should do this, and I've been thinking. Now, the Bible does tell us we should have wise counsel. That's right. That's right. Amen. So you have wise counsel. But some people are standing still, because, and they're not doing anything, mm -hmm. because they cannot make up their mind about anything. They don't have a conviction about anything. Or they use it as an excuse to not do anything. And so they said, let me go keep on talking and let me keep on thinking. And one day, maybe I will move. And so he said, but I didn't need to ask any other human being. I'm at verse 17. He says, and I didn't go up and find the other apostles either. I didn't need to go find anybody else. When God told me to do something, that's what I did. I struck out and I began to do what I felt like I needed to do in order to fulfill the calling that God put on my life. Amen. And then so he said he went out into Arabia. They said they don't know what he did there. It might have been a wilderness experience. He went out to Damascus. He returned back to Damascus. You, most people in here are believers. Yeah. And they know about the Damascus exactly. Road where he got this, you know, where he met with Jesus. Then he said three years later. So he gets a call from the Lord to change his ways and, then, and, and to get on the side of the people of the way, the Christians as we call them. And he goes off to himself and he does whatever he needs to do to prepare. Comes back three years later. Then he meets with the, the, the disciples, Peter. He said he stayed with him for 15 days. I'm at verse 19. He said, then he only met with James, the Lord's brother. And he said, I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Remember what Paul says uh, when we talk about the, uh, the ministry of reconciliation. He says in that in 2 Corinthians, he talks about us begging people, beseeching mm -hmm. people to come to give their lives to God, to be saved. So he wants to convince the people to listen. Right. Sometimes we always, right. uh, I remember I was at a place and I would say, you need to tell the people that. You need to tell the people that. Yes, and right. that person would say, they already know. Yeah. And I would say, if they already know, then it why do they need that. you? Yeah. Why would God send us if people already know? If we look at the Bible and we look at, we look at even ourselves in some areas, amen. amen. How many times did somebody have to tell Israel? How many times did they have to tell the Jews, the Hebrews? Amen. Over and over. Oh, I am no. the God who brought amen. you across the Red Sea. Yes. I'm the God who took you into the promised land. It didn't matter. People have to be repeatedly told some things. Amen. They have to be reminded. And sure, we have the Holy Spirit, but they even have to be reminded that they have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> amen. They have to be reminded that they have amen. the power of God. We have to be encouraged. Amen. 
saying? That's why he wants us to be unified. So we can encourage one another. So we can stand in one faith. We can remind each other of the power that we have, the calling and responsibilities that we have, so that we, you know, we are bold enough to step out. And then to fulfill our purpose and our calling. So he said, I went and met up with them, and I'm telling you, this is the truth. Because look at his background. Yeah. I mean, people are probably, you yeah. lying. You know, know, you ain't gonna meet up with no disciples, because if you met with the disciples, they probably would have beat your butt, or threw you out, cussed you out. I did some more stuff, you know Peter cussed, right? So yeah. they probably cuss you out. <laughs> Amen. Like, you ain't gonna meet with no disciples. Amen. So he said, I'm Amen. telling you, it's the truth. That's what I did. And then I went out into Syria and Cilicia. And, it, and then nobody even know who I was when I went up there. He didn't go like, hey, y'all, it's me, Paul. You know, I changed my man. It was a lady I was watching. See, I should need something. I was watching a paternity court. It, it pops up automatically in a feed sometimes. And this girl said, well, he's the dad. And they said, well, every time she's with him, he's the dad. But when they start fighting, he's the dad. And then she said, so the judge said, so I guess you just change your mind about who the dad is. So that's what some people do about even vital, important things. They just change their mind. Amen. They're like, I don't know who you are. I don't know who the dad is. So so when uh, Paul went out of here, nobody knew who he was. He didn't go like, I'm Paul. I'm the guy who used to persecute the Christians. Look at me. I was a Pharisee. The, uh, Pharisees. I'm this great guy. You know, uh, whatever. He didn't do that. He just went about doing what he was supposed to be doing. And so, and people didn't recognize him at first. All they knew in those, in those provinces they said all they knew was that the people who did know him, Ooh. how many people have moved to a new town, a new job, a new place? People do not know your reputation there. Right, right. They do not know anything about you. But it's always uh, in the in the um, the voice translation. They said there's always a person in the crowd. Right. <laughs> there's always a person in the crowd that started talking. Uh, when I was teaching at Evangel uh, High School, the, I, I was going out with sub. And the kids would start trying to act a fool, because you know the kids think they can act a fool on the sub. Sure. Yeah. So, unless you got a sub like me, right? And then you don't act a fool with me, because I put you in the corner yeah, and you be 18. So it's like, <laughs> so they start acting a fool. And I would say to them, you know what? I don't even know you. You know, this is a Christian school, so I can use the Bible. And I'm like, you have an opportunity to start over with a whole new reputation in front of me. So that when I go out and give a report, I can give a good, good report, report about you. You know, versus whatever anybody else knows about you. So if I were you, I'd be on my best behavior in front of me so that I can, you can change your whole reputation in front of me. Right. And so that's what Paul did. It's like he's coming out and he's a whole new person. And so the people who actually knew him, they didn't even talk about him. They were just in shock and in awe. And they said, hey, isn't this the guy that used to persecute us? And now he's preaching the very faith that he used to try to destroy. And that made people repent and turn to God because if God can change the worst of sinners, I mm mean, -hmm. Paul always said that, didn't he? He said, oh, I'm the chief of sinners, I'm the chief sinner. I mean, and you, when God see, sees our witness, when we're honest about what we do and what we've done, God can work with us. I mean, right. he can use us and he can send us out. And people will believe God because of us because of our honesty about ourselves, because of our willingness to own up to who we really are right. and what we really do and what we've really done. But in this that's society right. today, there's something called deflection that's going on. I said, Lord, I'm gonna try to talk about this. It's where, when it says, um, the researcher said, I'll, I'll read this, it says, do you find yourself trying to have the mistakes that you make or trying to push the blame for things you do onto someone else? And what really made me think about this and really put it in my spirit, I'm surprised, you know, the Lord just wouldn't go out of my head, is when the press secretary tends to get up and she tends to say lies. Like, that's, I don't know how to say it. Like, we will hear the president say something, and then right away she'll say he didn't say it. <laughs> okay? And if they ask her a question, then she'll say, well, what about the, what the Democrats did? Yeah. Okay? That's called deflection. Right. And we see that. Out. Yeah. We are blowing it off. It's like, and blaming others. And that's a terrible thing for Christians. And it seems like people are picking that up. And then they're starting to do that. If I said, if I saw Bobby take the cookie from the cookie jar, he would say, who, me? Could yeah, be. Right, right. Peggy probably took that cookie from the cookie jar. <laughs> and if Peggy didn't take the cookie from the cookie jar, she probably took the apple from the, the bowl the other day. Uh -huh. And the whole conversation changes. There's no repentance. There's, therefore, there's no forgiveness. And then the person's just always deflecting. So in general, deflection means that you're passing something over to someone else in an attempt to draw the attention away from yourself. And it says some people learned that when they were kids. 
And that's what it seems like too, because a lot of people seem like they don't want to quote, get into trouble. Right. And then they'll do anything not to get into trouble. But how's the best way, what's the best thing you can do to not get into trouble? Don't, don't do it in the first place, it. amen? And that's why we have the Holy Spirit to that's tell us don't do it. Mm-hmm. Don't do it, but people just keep you know, suppressing that Holy Spirit like that Romans 1, amen? They suppress the knowledge of God, and then they, they go ahead and do things, and they just want to cover them. They said that some people were abused when they were young. They were, they, they'll do anything not to get in trouble anymore. But what, how many people know that it stops our maturity when we're not able to take responsibility for what we Amen. say and what we do? Amen. And for Christians, the Bible tells us that we're going to be held accountable for everything that we say and do in these bodies. So it doesn't matter if I did it and I say anybody else did it. God knows no. who really did right. it. Amen. And so it, te- it tells you that it's important to t- go ahead and take responsibility because the Bible tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And then what can he do after that? Give us righteousness. He can clean us up. Yep. But just imagine if you can't even admit what you did. Give us his righteousness. It's all Thank still you. sitting there on us. It doesn't matter who else you blame. Some people, they say they'll do it because they don't want to look bad. Yeah. Amen. They don't, some people do it because they don't want to look dumb. You know, it's like you made a mistake, and they don't want to own it to their mistakes because they're afraid people will say they are dumb. All those things are pride, and pride is what took the devil out of heaven. Okay. Amen. So we have to humble ourselves Come when we make a mistake. But it also says that some people, you know, when we were studying, I think it was First John 3, it says that some people are the children of the devil. Mm. Amen. So they will put fault on someone else. Mm. Right here in this town, there's a guy up, I think it was a police officer, that lied on a guy, and, and the guy did jail. all those years right. in jail. Mm-hmm. He, he changed the, the evidence. The and there's two more of the people that he did the same thing to. And don't you know, yep. they were trying to give him a deal where he did not even do any time, although he right. had other people go to prison for the lies that he told. Lord, but thank God that God is raising up people. This is a time of truth right yeah, now. Yeah. And so the, the I think it's the county attorney, he's going, oh, heck to the no. You need to go to jail for what you have done right. because it's a crime against humanity to tell lies and shift blame on people that don't deserve right. it. Right. Now, your position. And, yeah. and then to, right. to, to, yeah, because God is going to hold leaders more highly accountable anyway. Mm-hmm. But I thank God because that same guy, he's, I think he's the same guy that when they tried to charge those protesters with felonies, and this country was founded on protest. I, one of these days, America will tell us the truth about what America stands for. Because I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm so confused. Amen. Every time I look up, the rules are changing. I mean, we had a war to start the whole place. Amen. We rebelled against England. Amen. Okay, that was a protest. We had a civil war because some people wanted to keep slaves and some people did. That was a protest. Amen. Women wanted rights. That was a protest. People want their unemployment. They want to protest. They get out there, and that was a protest. Amen. Everybody's out there for the police. They out here protesting. But then there's only certain people they want to lock up and beat up and stuff. Okay, and say you're causing problems, you're a rioter or whatever. What does America really stand for? When Americans become upset, what do we do? When people become upset, what do we do? When Christians become upset, what are we to do? The Bible tells us to go to the people causing the problem. And then the Bible even says that. Go to the people who are causing the problem and state your issue. Now, if I'm wrong, y'all tell me sit down right now. The Bible doesn't say you have ought to get your brother to go to them. Amen. That is not a crime to go to them. Amen. It's just a way of going to them. And nobody condones crime and destruction. And we talked about that already. I think it was the last time I preached. But some people, they purposefully put things on other people. How many people have been set up at their job before? Amen. You didn't even do anything wrong, but you find yourself at the end of getting blamed for something Amen. you didn't even wow. do. Amen. Amen. So we know what that feels like to be on the other end of that. Why would we do something like that? It says, on the other hand, some people use it to make themselves look as good as possible and to make others look bad on purpose. And I think that sometimes we don't understand that there's a real devil. There are people that the devil uses just like God uses them. Amen. And so we need to be aware of that so that we don't get blindsided. Amen. We need to know that there's another side to the whole thing. We do carry ourselves, but sometimes we have to defend ourselves. Amen. Sometimes we have to speak up and say things are wrong. And it might have a cost to it, but that's what we might have to do is say this stuff is wrong and we're not going to take it anymore. You know, go to your boss, go to your supervisor. Sometimes you're going to have to do that because that's the only way change is going to happen. And I'm telling you, this is a good season to do that. But if you're a person that just deflects, puts it on somebody else and says, well, you know, oh my God, 
Because your heart starts beating, doesn't right, it? Right. When you get a, when you make a mistake and you know you're gonna get in trouble, you know, you go like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Oh, I might lose my job. Oh, people are gonna think less of me. But I mean, look at Jesus. They put all kinds of blame on him. They put all kinds of things on him that he didn't do. Amen. And, then, Amen. and yet he took it out. Amen. Amen. He went to the cross with all kinds of accusations on him that were, weren't true. Amen. How much more should we be able to tell the truth? So I was looking at this, and I'm going to give you biblical examples that you are very uh, familiar with on deflection. I'm going to start in Genesis 3. And I'm not going to read out the scripture um, for time, because most of you all probably know it. And it's the very beginning that was deflection, wasn't right. it? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Because God had already given a command yeah. that you can eat whatever, but you can't eat that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And someone else came along, mm -hmm. the serpent, and said something different. Where you always gonna get in trouble listening to somebody else. What did Paul say? I didn't need to go talk to anybody else because I already knew no, what God right. had said to me. Right. And so that's what I went and I did. I didn't go talk to the serpent. Amen. Right. To tell me something different. Right. Amen. But in the beginning, which caused all this problem, she listened to the serpent to tell her Steve. The serpent told her something different. Mm -hmm. And then she ate the, the forbidden fruit, whatever that is. And then Adam ate it too. He was right there with her. Uh, you know, people keep blaming the woman, but her husband, who is the man, the head of the household, he ate it also. So to say, no, heck, heck no, God told me something different like Joseph. I would not sin against run. my God. Adam didn't say that. Run. He ate it. And said, yeah, run. And then instead, they eat it. And then, of course, God knows. And that's what we're talking about. God knows. Even if we blame somebody else, God knows. Even if we lie about it and cover, if we change the subject, God knows. Amen. So for the Christian, we do not deflect. But at the beginning, they deflected. And then he says, uh, God says, where, where y'all at? And they go like, oh, we was over here hiding because we knew we was naked. God goes, so you always get caught, don't you? The Bible tells you our, your sin is going to fan you out one way or another. Even if it's eating us up inside from the Holy Spirit, our sins are going to fan us out. Judgment, our sins are going to fan us out. Thank God for Jesus that we, we don't face hell, but the shame of going before God, you know, Doing dumb stuff, putting our, uh, you know, our witness at risk for dumb stuff is just as bad almost. Yeah, amen. And so he goes like, well, who told y'all y'all was naked? Sure. Amen. So you already called, aren't you? Like, yeah. who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? Who, me? Not me, you yeah. know? And he goes like, oh, you know what? It's your fault because you gave me that woman. So he's deflected. Amen. I thought, you know, so like, if it was one of us and we was there, I was like, I didn't bite it. You did. And then don't try to put it on me, you bit it. Amen. It has it my fault. Amen. So they were so bold to deflect that they put it on God. He said, you know, it was that woman you gave me, and then she gave it to me, so that's why I ate it. And she goes, well, then it was the serpent, even though she quoted that she wasn't supposed to eat it. You know, and of course, everybody got in trouble. It's not like children, no, because people are like children nowadays. So they were deflecting all the way back in the beginning, and we see the damage that they did. Amen. Because Amen. If, just imagine with a forgiving God, if he would have, if they would have just confessed their sins, if they would have just confessed their sins, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for Jesus that we have that available to us we now. We can say, I took the cookie from the cookie jar. I bit it and I gave it to somebody else and it's my fault. You know, and God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from the oh. mess that makes us take the cookie from the cookie jar yeah. that makes us eat the forbidden fruit. And now we're in a mess because people put the blame on everybody else instead of taking the blame. And then we go to Cain yeah. and Abel. You know, somebody's jealous, and that's in four, Genesis 4, and he kills his brother because he's angry at who? He's angry at God. He's not even mad at him, but he deflects. He can't do anything to God, so he takes it out on somebody else. And then, of course, what? God knows. Yeah. Amen. He knows. There's no hiding it, even if we deflect the blade. And he goes like, hey, where's your brother? And what does he say? My, 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 brother's my, my brother's keeper, he deflects, doesn't he? Why don't you answer the question? Don't y'all feel like that when that press secretary's talking? Don't you go like, will you please just answer the question? Amen? So, but, you know, but this all the way back in the beginning, isn't it? Amen? And then we go to Rachel and Leah. Amen? And we know Jacob was a trickster. He probably just got back what he deserved, you know, bottom line. But, hey, you know, Bobby, you was just standing up here talking about how hard you was working. Can you imagine if you didn't get what was coming to you after working for seven years? Right, and then man. they gave you something else. And then, and then when you went and confronted them, because for those who don't know this story, then Jacob, he's working, he's in love with Rachel, right? And the dad cuts a deal, Laban, and he says, hey, 
work for seven years and you can be, she can be your wife. He says, okay. And so he works for seven years and then instead, the dad slips in the sister Leah, right? For those who don't know the, don't know the story. And Jacob, uh, I mean, the, yeah, he wakes up and then he, what's Leah doing up in here, you know? But I was, I was, I, he, I mean, how could you not know? I mean, I'm, I'm sure Bobby would know that well for Felicia, hopefully. I and mean, then he's been right. around her long enough, you know, he knows what she looks like, smell like or something, you right, know what I mean? Right. So he, you know, Leah probably had it going on, I ain't gonna even laugh, because she had all them kids and stuff, he must have been like it or some kind right, of way. Right, right, That's an aside in the opinion, but he was upset because that's not what he bargained for. That's not what he worked for. And so instead of the dad saying like, hey, I, you know, I just want her to go first. He goes like, it's our, tra it's our custom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's our tradition, <laughs> you know, that we, we don't marry off of oh, the younger. Sure. It's not our custom here to marry off. This is at uh, Genesis 29, verse 26. It says, it's not our custom to marry off the younger daughter. For you know you lied to this man. That's right. Why can't you right. just tell the truth? You lied to him. You played him. Yeah. He, he, whether he deserved it or not, you played him. So, oh, no, it's, just, it's not my fault. It's our custom. <laughs> the yeah, it's the custom about her. You know, and if you wait till you get through sleeping with her for about a week, then I'll give you the other uh, daughter, but you got to work seven more, more years. years. <laughs> Amen. And so look at the stuff people do when they deflect. You know, instead of just telling the truth, just being fair and square, just confessing when they mess up, it causes all kinds of problems from the beginning all the way down. And so that's what I'm talking about today. We need to own it. We confess our faults. We Amen. confess our sins. Amen. We tell the truth truth because it helps us mature spiritually. It makes us be stronger. It makes us lose our pride. It helps us to be humble before God. It helps us to have a clear conscience. It helps us to be trustworthy. It helps us to have a positive witness because people go like, yeah, you know, and sometimes even the worst things that we've done by overcoming them, like with Paul, when he said, like, I've done some horrible, horrible things, but when the Lord changes our life, that makes those people have even a stronger witness. I've said that to a lot of people that I know do some terrible stuff, and I'll go like, man, if you, you have the charisma that you have, the charm that you have, the things that you've done, you will really be able to witness to people who do those same things because you will know it when you see it. Amen. And you'll be able to talk about it. Amen. So don't ever be ashamed, so ashamed of what you've done that you don't give your life to Jesus. Amen. No, fully, full on, no, full throttle, all, throttle, all in Not with all Jesus. If you can trust him with your sins, you can trust him with your troubles, you can trust him with our dirt and our ground. God knows us. Amen. Amen. He already knows. And what he's looking for is a clean heart yes, and a Lord. right Thank spirit. You. Amen. That's all he's looking for. Somebody who wants to be right with him. He'll do the work. Amen. Amen. So we don't bl shift, blame shift and we don't pretend like we didn't do what we've done. We don't throw the rock and hide our hand. Amen. We don't blame other people. We don't let people take the fall for what we've done. Amen. And I'm going to give you some scriptures. It's 1 John 1, 8 through 9. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Acts 17, 30. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, <clears throat> excuse me, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Romans 6, 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. No, another verse says, God forbid. Amen. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in? It's a sin to lie on other people. It's a sin to do to have lies of Amen. omission. Amen. Amen. It's a sin. It's still lying. James 5, 16 says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Because, you know, sometimes it's a sickness. People are lying, man. It's like you get... You're a pathological liar. You need to go get some help. You know, if, you're, if we're so weak and we're so afraid and we're so anxious that we just feel like we can't accept the truth, then we, like, we need to go get some help. But our first step is from the Lord. We pray, Lord, you know, forgive me, Lord, clean me up. Help me to be stronger. Deliver me from my anxieties like you did David in the Psalms, Lord. Help me to be a righteous person man, a woman of God, and then he has sent people. There are therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, amen, to find out why you got to lie, why you got to evade the truth, amen. He is the truth, amen. Something's missing if we're unable to tell the truth, and while I'm saying this today, some people may say, this don't seem important to me. 
But I'm telling you, it is important because there is a lying spirit in the land. And, then, and people perish from the lack of knowledge. And so when people are hiding truth and knowledge from people, people are making decisions based on not having right. enough information. Right. Amen. And so when somebody who's in authority is evading the issue and not telling the truth, it is hurting everybody because we're making choices that could kill us. I mean, when we're talking about viruses, are we going out here making choices? And we go like, I didn't even have the information that I needed. Or they're making laws and rules that are going to impact our lives, but they're not giving us the information to let us know whether or not we should even vote you in or out of office. I mean, so we're going to pray against the lying spirit in the land, the, 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 the spirit that puts blame where it doesn't belong. I mean, James 5, 19, I think I read that. Uh, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. What does it say? Y'all know what it says. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Yeah, That's our much. Yes, it availeth much. It means it makes much power available. So we pray for our leaders, amen, when they're lying and evading. We pray for ourselves if we're blame shifting, amen, deflecting. Second Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he's just being patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Amen. So we need to repent from the lying spirit, the blaming spirit, because we're going to all sit before the judgment seat of Christ, and we're going to answer for everything we ever said and did in these bodies, whether you're in the White House or the Dog House. Amen. And we're going to answer. He heard it all. He knows what happened. He knows where the cookie is. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So he, okay. he knows who took the cookie from the cookie jar. He knows. Amen. So we might as well just fess up, let him clean us up, and then we can go on up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I know that Praise almost God. pretty much everybody here Praise is, God. you know, a believer and they're saved as far as I know of. But I'm gonna make I'm gonna send the invitation because there's other people who are gonna be listening to this video um, all over the country. And so or maybe all over the world, I'm not sure. But if there's anyone who under the sound of my voice in this room or outside of this room who does not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. If you have heard the preached word, if you have studied the, the written word, if you have had a visitation from the Holy Spirit today that has touched your heart and your mind and your soul, and you say, hey, I understand it finally, I get it, he's knocking on the door of my heart, and I know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for my sins, that he got up on that third day and he is seated on the right hand of the Father, making Bless intercession you, on my behalf. And I need that gift of the Holy Spirit to help me to be able to tell the truth, to stand under my consequences, to know I'm going to be all right in a world with a pandemic or with people who are coming against people, falsehoods, angels, people appearing to be angels of light, the devil's devices. I need the Holy Spirit of God to be in, to enter into my body, my heart, and my soul. Then today you make that confession of faith. God hears you. And he will deliver you from your sins and you will be saved. Forgiveness is available to anyone who wants to receive it. And so you make that confession and you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If there's a church around you that you are able to attend safely, other than that, study for yourself, pray, get to know the Lord, and then Amen. just spread the yes. word. Amen. And if you need prayer, then, then you pray. And then you can ask people around you to pray. If someone says they're a believer, let them pray. Contact us. We're Solid Foundation Church of God, located at 4201 Bank Street in Louisville, Kentucky. We also have a Facebook page. On that page, it has our pastor's phone number, Peggy Nevlin. And so you can contact us, and we will pray with you. We will talk with you and walk with you to your, through your confession of faith. We will do anything that we can to help you in your walk with Jesus Christ. And so we just... Pray today that all the churches just unite, all the, all the body of Christ just unite in a time like this and make sure that everybody gets what they need spiritually so that we can still stand strong and don't backslide. Amen. Because God's plans have not been removed regardless of what mankind's plans are, restrictions are. Just like Paul said, he still had to go. And then it didn't matter if people were going to persecute him. It didn't matter if people were going to kill him, talk about him or anything. It didn't matter what was going on. Whatever the call is God has on our life, that plan is still in place. And we're going to need the Holy Spirit. And we're going to have to walk in truth. Amen. 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 Give God a hand, couple of friends. Amen. Amen.